Welcome back to Ace Attorney Nostalgia Trips. In the last episode, we met Larry Bird. Or Larry. Larry Bird. Larry, um, who's Bird again? I forget. I'm pretty sure that was a real name. Whatever. Larry, uh, Butts. And we found this guy, and this guy, and this guy. And everybody's here. And now we're gonna learn what this person's here for. Miss Pring's Princess, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. And even in costume, I cannot talk to women. Miss Pink Princess, if you would please answer. Me! <laughs> I love that reaction. I actually had to watch that reaction like three times because my recording freaking failed on me twice. And I just love that reaction of Edward. It was like, would you please answer me? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> this must be what we call fate. Ah, uh, old bag. It's been... I think a day. How could this happen two days in a row? It's only been two days? What the heck? Dude, it feels like a freaking month or a year. Actually, it has probably been a year since I started this game. So yeah, years. W what the? Aren't you Miss Oldbag? Why, what, why are you so surprised? Didn't you like do something with this person before? Ah, so you're the one that got to play the Steel Samurai. It's too bad I didn't realize that until now. Why? I mean, like, you guys worked. What is with those boobs? It does not work in your character. Oh my god, why did I say that out loud? This does not look good. <laughs> you were acquaintances with Larry? Why, yes, we worked at the same company for a little while, you know. What company? That's why it's okay, my edgy poo. You don't need to be jealous. No one's jealous of you. Oh my god, this is so... I don't even know. <clears throat> Uh, next room, trying to get in some beauty sleep. But it was so noisy here that I couldn't fall asleep, so I came over to complain. Hey! We're solving- I don't even know how you were able to, like, get past the security. Didn't we have, like, security over this freaking room or something? So imagine my shock when I saw my precious edgy poo waiting here for me. I mean, who could have imagined that you would ever come to a show like this? Um, actually, that's very true, considering we didn't even want to come here, to be honest. I guess I misjudged you, Edgy Poo. You think we like cartoons like this? I mean, I like cartoons. You misjudged him? I thought he was trying to avoid me, you know. Um, no, we came here to watch a show. That old mis- That was no misjudgment. That's precisely what I was trying to do. <laughs> wow, dude. Don't you know never to make a lady cry, even if it's old and 60 years old. But it looks like the winds have shifted and he's now willing to be chased after. What the heck? Okay, this is- This was the true Yandere. This was the real yonder the entire time, man. I'm simply overwhelmed. Don't you worry, Edgy Poo. I chase you forever. At the ends of the earth. Wow, really yonder right there. This is the original Yandere. She's so freaking old. She has to be original. Is that just Peachy? Yeah, I know, right? This is one of those rare times when Francisca and I are actually see eye to eye. Peachy, I mean, I mean, you think this is probably creepy, but okay. All right, I guess I have to talk to you now, lady. Happy? Now then, ahem, what are you doing here? I thought you were working at Gatewaterland as the Pink Badger. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. What are you talking about? That was ages ago. That was two days ago. That was yesterday. <laughs> okay then. Wow. Jobs really go and come really quickly, man. Look, I worked at the Global Studios before. A long time ago, right? I thought that was like last week. Well, they called me up this morning. Kind of out of the blue, actually. They called you? Apparently, the girl who plays the Pink Princess collapsed from a bad cold. It happened so suddenly, so they called me in to be your last minute replacement. You're a security guard turned a comedian badger thing. Why'd they ask you in the first place? Do they not have enough people on staff at that studio? <laughs> I guess not. I really couldn't say no, so here I am playing the role of the heroine. Why couldn't you say no? Instead of that Mindy girl, I mean. But the poor girl, I feel bad for her. Why? Because they let me stand in for her, she's going to have a terrible time when she returns. I mean, not exactly great as reading Stone to call them and in Mary last second and trip to the point lines where I act on said steel hand Mary and handed me and for my audience forgives me a bunch of simpletons. I think I did good at that. I think I felt I heard like she throwing a badger at a samurai, the samurai collapsed and like the enemy won and everyone was angry, but they're all simpletons, I think. That's what happened. You're rather lively, young lady. Oh yeah, you never actually heard Actually, you saw this girl before. So basically, you received a stand-in request this morning, correct? You got it. If you need to see it, I've got it right here. Look. Thanks. It appears that she is telling the truth. Why would she lie? Then again, she's lied multiple times, so I don't really surprise anymore. Your fine acting moved the entire audience to tears. Yes, tears of laughter, as I recall. 
close enough, I guess. I, I mean, like, I like laughter. I like laughter. I try to make people laugh. I'm terrible at it, but sure, why not? But being famous has a problem to do, you know? Here, take a look at this. It's a letter from a stalker. What? I was just taking my break when I found a stuck under the door of my room. Wendy, I'll be ascending on you from above tonight. Your lovely night. That's weird. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kinds of things. Look at what it says. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight. Your loving night. Thanks. Uh, that's you're you're really scary. Hm, absolutely revolting. What? I thought that was actually kind of cute. I mean, you'd think he could get my name right. There's no accent in my name. Accent. Why? Wait, this horrible handwriting. Handwriting. Where have I seen this before? Ah, uh, but now that you're here, Edgy Poo, I feel 100% safe. We candy. We got hit over the head and tied to a pole. You think we're the best bodyguards for you? Eh, I. Where do I factor into this? <laughs> You'd bust that evil stalker man for my sake, wouldn't you, Edgy Poo? We would get killed. Well, if you allow me the liberty of handle this in my own way, I'll gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. <laughs> well, at least he cares. Oh, come on, Edgy Poo, stop being so dismissive and playing hard to get. You are a weird la lady. Alright, let's learn about the time of the murder, I guess. What were you doing at the time of the crime? Are we really expecting an old lady, 60-year-old lady? What crime? What? You haven't noticed? You were here. You thought you woke up from our yelling. You couldn't get... Yeah, you didn't hear the murderer get yelled at? After the show was over, I had nothing but free time on my hands. So I use the fireplace in the room next door to keep my bad hip warm. You have a bad hip? Well, a mother occurred in the room right next to yours. How did you not notice? Is that right? Oh, Edgy Poo, I'm so scared. Hold me, caress me. What the hell? <laughs> no! If, if you could please come clean under my person. I can already see her like grabbing onto like Edgy's coattails or something. And that's a really scary thought. In any case, I take it then that you failed to show up at the Ambassador of a speech? Oh, that. No, I didn't go. You're an idiot. I mean, I may have the heart of a young, tender maiden. You're 67 years old or something like that. How old is she? Can I figure it out? Does she actually tell me how old she is? Nope! Wow! Everyone up! Why is the mask star the mask the second a Asian guy? Whatever. I like how they don't tell me her age. That's kind of cute. Just fuse it to cooperate at times. Okay, so you are 67, basically. As soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. I couldn't move at all. Can you provide proof of your condition? Oh, you just go on ahead and ask the doctors in the infirmary. Okay, you know what? I don't want to. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to this embassy. I have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave that room is rather pleasant. I mean, how did she leave the room in the first place? She has a bad hip. Whatever. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but still. Still a scary thought. What's going on, Karma? I brought the police car. As you requested, sir. Aw, oh, doggy. Good work. You may leave now, professor. Officer. Doggy. Hmm, this dog. I requested the assistance of a dog in our search for the Yathagrasu. Why? What would it even do? Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're brighter than some detectives. Aw, I like dogs. Hey, you're a real cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy. Aw, it's so adorable. That's the police dog Gumshoe's been taken care of. Hey, it's the little missile! It's Missile! I think its name is Missile. Hey, I got it right! Oh my god, I didn't even see this guy! It's the first day to turn the game! What a fitting name for a police dog dashes out in front of an attacks. I don't think it attacks. I, the action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve the case for us, you know? <laughs> I know, right? But it's still adorable hearing anything about that kind of cute dog trying to attack something. Now, Missile, I want you to find some clues. Go! That's useful. Go, Missile! Go, you adorable little dog! Okay, that was quick! Good dog. You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a sudden someone I know. Jerk! I've been doing everything here! Now, what have we have here? What is this? It looks like a small hot dog, but... Hmm, wait, Francisca, isn't that an official samurai dog? How do you know that? I think he wants to eat it. Ah, no! Bad Missile! I... He ate it. I wonder if it's alright for him to eat that. I don't know. All I know is that we just lost some evidence. I'm putting that dog under arrest now. Even though it's adorable. Just a meat substance snack featuring the seal samurai. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you gathered there in a single quick glance. I mean, it was like there for a couple of seconds on my screen, so I'm assuming that's how long that could happen. We should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog there in the first place. Hmm? It looks like that snack was an all-missile found. Hmm? What do we have here? 
I don't want to know what this is. It appears to be a lady's undershirt. Francisco, what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? I'm only saying Francisco because I really don't want to think about the other person it could be for. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing. Okay, that's a creepy thought. Somehow doubt that. It doesn't look like the shirt would even fit him. He is 60, I guess. Samurai dog in a lady's undershirt. What are these two items doing in a room like this? Given the circumstances, the lady's undershirt could only belong to one per- Oh, God. <sighs> That's a scary thought. But I guess we have to do it for the sake of Larry. Larry, don't you see what I do to you? Don't you see what I go through? I'm about to talk to a lady's undershirt to a lady. Do you even do that in real life? If you could please take a look at this brown colored undershirt. Oh, Edgy Poo, what is the meaning of this? I don't want to know where this is coming from. Why did you steal that thing from my bags? Okay. Lady? Lady? All you have to do is ask and I will gladly give it to you as many as you like. Lady? Thanks, but no thanks. This shirt was found here at this crime scene. What? What are you been doing, lady? Come down. Why don't you confess and explain what it's doing here? I know nothing. Nothing, I tell you. Okay, you're already freaking suspicious. What? I admit that I used the fireplace to dry that shirt, but I can't really help the fact that I had to, you know. Wait, you used this fireplace to dry that shirt? Wearing a pink princess costume is like being in a sauna. And on top of that, I get fingered as a suspect? You're too cruel, Edgy Pill. What the heck? Are you claiming that you could never once set foot inside this room? Of course I am. If I had been the one to find a body, do you think I'd be calm and relaxed as I am? Kind of. You kind of have seen a body before like that, though. I tell you, it's always like this. Fall to another. That weekly tabloid article is missing. Cameras missing. The lawyer makes sure father is missing. Speaking. Husband can leave. When married. Stuck marrying. Kind of proposed. He should have. I don't deserve you. I can't help it. Will you marry me? Men these days. What the hell? You're married and you're hitting on us? That's the first thing I think of. Lady, you're married. Why are you hitting on us? Second, why the heck do you remember this from your cousin? Wait, your husband went missing? I don't even know anymore. I'm um, well... I don't believe she is lying about her actions. So I can safely assume she really was drying her shirt by the fireplace on her break. Well, at least we've proven that she's not a culprit. The undershirt managed to move from the next room into this one. Hmm. I wonder why. I assume that Samurai Dog was also yours? Ah, uh, that brilliant mind of yours. You really can see through everything about me. Um... I'm gonna forget she said that. So the feeling of dread continues, but I suppose I should ask for more details. <sighs> Let's see why you ate a samurai dog. The samurai dog was yours, wasn't it? Oh, of course, I'm forever yours, Edgy Wedgy Poo. Wedgy Wedgy Poo, what the heck? We're talking about burgers here, or not even burgers, the dogs here. If you could just stick to what I asked you. Edgy, are you in Miss Old Bag? No! No! <laughs> I love Larry sometimes. You really don't change, do you? When will you learn how to take a joke? Anyway, that samurai dog wasn't mine. Those things are a present from the studio to the embassy. So why was it in the fireplace? A present? The studio bigwigs basically told us to play delivery boys. We were supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy people and tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the punch push cart and just move them all. Oh, that's why you're wearing a push cart. Those studio guys should have delivered those things by themselves, right, Edgy? I don't think it matters. So, did you deliver the samurai dogs to the embassy staff as per your instructions? Hey, Edgy, don't you just ignore me and my question? Aren't you going to stick up for me? No. You've never... We've never needed that. How about that? See, after the show, I went to rest that spell in, in the dressing room. Because of my bad hip, you know. And there were... There were the samurai dogs just sitting on the dressing room floor. Weren't they for the studio, though? Please tell me she didn't eat it. I suppose you had to make preparations for distributing them after the show. She ate it, didn't she? Well, by preparation, you mean sampling them as well. You're an idiot. Excuse me? Oh, I tried one and thought they were actually quite good. They're hot dogs from a studio. Sorry, but I just had to find out. I know it was silly of me to think this, but... I figured that since they're for a kid's show, their taste was probably for kids, too. Actually, to be honest, I would think the exact same thing. But they were so good that I couldn't stop. Well, maybe you like weird, gross kids' food. Before I went back to my room, I just had to help myself to half a dozen or so boxes. BOXES?! I can't even eat that many hot dogs! As I sat there by the roaring fire, warming and eating them, I thought, ah, this is... No one wants to think about this. Giant boobs... 
that's the only thing I can think of right now, the giant poops. Um, what is it now? Oh, I know. I bet you want the box too, don't you, my edgy poop? No. Well, who am I to say no to you? But I'll only give you one. The rest are all for me. Your, um, thanks, I guess? Not gonna eat it all. Looks like the lesson for today is that when the Steel Samurai... Ah, the pink princess! Yawn! Take off their masks, they transform into a pair of annoying troublemakers. That's kinda true, actually. They are part of a murder, I guess. Hmm. What about you, Larry? What do you have to say? I'm curious about this note, though. Is this yours? I wonder if you might know what this is. Nope, not a clue! You're an idiot! You didn't even look at it! Nah, that's because the only thing I can see right now is the form of my lovely Franzi. Please whip her. Please whip her in that case. Allow me to help you see my form to all eternity. Eek! Ah! Thank you. Whippity! Whip! Trip! I don't think we're getting testimony from that guy anymore. Now this is a trip I'm going to endorse, especially if we can finally get some peace here. You're so mean to your own friends, man. You're only so mean to your own friends. Okay. Friends for logic something. Smoke from chimney and use the fireplace. So, I'm pretty sure the smoke that Larry saw was probably when Mr. Old, Miss Oldbag was warming her hip. I mean, that's the only thing that really makes sense right now. There is no trace of this room's fireplace being used. And your point is? Ahem, smoke was supposedly pouring out of the chimney connected to this fireplace. At least according to Larry. This contradiction of facts! And Larry's not that type of stupid. There was testimony from an investigator that puts Larry at this particular chimney. So no, I don't think it was a mistaken impression on Larry's part. Yeah, that is true. The detective bot said that he saw Larry doing this. On the other hand, the my fireplace in the next room was being used at the time. Where do you suppose the smoke from that fireplace went? Ah, I see. So what you are proposing is this. The smoke that came out of the chimney was actually from Miss Oldvax's fire. So basically, the fireplace is in neighboring rooms. Share one chimney. Is that what you are implying? Hmm, that's interesting. I've never actually heard about that before. I've never actually saw something like that. It's kind of cool. How does it work if both of them are on fire, though? Is it like double the smoke or something? That seems very bad for everyone. Whatever, let's just do the next one. This is the only logical conclusion. Next, ladies undershirt that missile found. What are you angry whipping me about? It's not my fault missile found a freaking undershirt. Why are you getting all excited over holding a lady's undergarment? What is wrong with you? You think we're some kind of pervert? I wouldn't surprise that if I was a pervert, but Miles Edgeworth, that's not a pervert at all. I think I dissed myself and lost all my girl followers from that. Miles Edgeworth, you and Count Sea Slug. Oh, dang. If you're not the owner of said undershirt, then hurry up and return it to her already. I thought we tried, but it didn't work out. You have it all wrong. This is evidence. And the owner of this piece of evidence was in the room next door. And yet, despite that, Missile found it in the fireplace of the room. This... Ladies undershirt. <laughs> Are you seriously claiming that this somehow passed through a solid brick wall? Not quite. The fireplace in this room is connected to a chimney. The other ch fireplace in the other room is also connected to the same chimney, leading us to the possibility that the two fireplaces are connected to each other. I thought we, I thought we figured that out though. Anyway, let's figure out what the heck this fireplace is. Can I look at the fireplace? Does anyone else notice the X? Let's see if I can't get a better look at it. Hmm, w what button that? Okay then, so the fireplace can turn. But who would have known about that? The wall separating the room's fireplace from the next room's fireplace. Why do you even have this in an embassy? What's the point of having interlocking fireplaces in an embassy? Apparently turns. As I suspected, this fireplace does indeed connect this room to a neighboring room. Why would you have this installed? The neighboring room? There appears to be nothing particular about the next room. I mean, I guess they can have secret, uh, meetings with this, but why would you have secret meetings? Isn't this against the law or something? But the fact that there is nothing special about the next room isn't what is important. It's the fact that there is a secret passageway through this room's fireplace. That is very creepy. We now know that fireplaces connects the three rooms, but how exactly is that significant? You aren't going to suddenly name the old lady as the Mask the Second Star, or Mask Star the Mask the Second's killer now, are you? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. No, she couldn't move at all because of her stiff hip. So she could not have been that one. Unfortunately, though, I believe that this fireplace has nothing whatsoever to do with the Master Second's murder. Then why do we care about it? Oh, investigation complete. Yay! And I lost nothing. Yay! It would appear that the answer has made itself known. You're making quite a confident face there, Mr. Prosecutor. 
Bring it on. I'm ready to counter any argument you may have. But we're... What do you mean? What if we have the same freaking ar argument? <laughs> Very well then, if you are prepared. I'll show you exactly where my deductions have led me. Good! I'm counting on you, Edgy! Leave it to me, Larry. My first attack will be... To expose your life for what it really is! <laughs> wow! We really hate our freaking friends, didn't we? M my lie! I know that there is still something you are keeping from the rest of us. W what's wrong with you? Why is it you won't believe no matter what I say, Edgy? Because you're lying. Curse you! I should just hurry up and die already if that's how it's gonna be! What the hell? I'll confess to every murder in the whole world and then kill myself! What the hell is wrong with you? And throw everything into the mass confusion! <laughs> This guy is a complete- I don't even know! What do you even call this? Murder-suicide? But he's- I don't know. <laughs> Throw everything into mass confusion, why don't you? There, I only have one thing to say to you. Even if you make that face at me, it's no use! A man who's ready to die strong-willed, you know, you're an idiot! Larry, it doesn't matter what sort of harebrained trouble you've caused. I only ask that you not lie to me. If you cause an innocent person to be judged unfairly because of some insipid lie, I will never forgive you. Dang. Edgy. Dang. Aren't we just the meanest? Although, allow me to say that I consider you to be among the innocent in, the, in this case. And that I will draw the real killer out. You can trust me on this. Alright, I, I, this time, this time I'll tell you the whole truth, okay? What happened, what didn't happen? The works, he's gonna lie. Just what happened will do? <laughs> what happened, what didn't happen, everything. Just tell me what happened. Now then, if you would please testify as what you did on the roof tonight. And we will find that out in the next episode. In the next episode, we're gonna figure out what the heck Larry did on the rooftop. This is Neon 62 signing off. Hope you like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you all next time.